Well, today is a great day. So blessed to be out here. You know, the past year and a half has been a roller coaster of a ride. I've been through a few, few failures, a few successes. Put a lot of time into it. Worked real hard to get back to here, to get back to doing this. Through the grace of God, somehow, here I am. Date today is November 1st, which means it is officially trapping season. Couldn't be happier. Just got the first fire of the season going. Wood stove's putting off some good heat, cabin's warming up. So now that it is November 1st, uh, pretty much everything's opened up for trapping. The only species that doesn't open up until December 1st is lynx and otter. Since this is a grizzly bear area, or an area where grizzly bears live, we can't begin setting snares until the beginning of December. We don't really do footholds because um, they, <clears throat> the regulations state they have to be checked once every 48 hours. From an ethical standpoint, I would say I would want to check them once every 24 hours. And I'm not up here every day, you know, I'm out here for a few days at a time, back home for a couple days, and back out here, so rather than setting footholds and then taking them down and, you know, resetting them when I'm back out here, you know, the, the dogs are pretty smart. It's incredible, actually, how good their sense of smell is and even their memory on areas when they pass through them, you know, they notice when things are different. So when you're constantly fiddling with your traps and stuff, uh, it makes it really difficult to trap an animal and I just don't know if footholds are really worth it out here when we can't be checking them every day so uh, because of that we just stick to snares you know the killing traps and that way you know we try to check them like about maybe once every two to four days I'd say but it's a killing trap so the animal won't be stuck there and waiting for you to come dispatch it so basically what I'm getting at is we won't start trapping the dogs until December 1st when we can start setting snares. So for this week, um, you know, we could get the Martin line going. Temperatures are fluctuating. They're, they're fluttering right around the, the zero degree mark. You know, during the day it gets up above zero at night, gets a little bit below zero. And I don't really want to set the Martin line until it's well below zero so that if we catch a Martin, it'll freeze because I don't want to risk wasting any fur. Next week though, it's supposed to be minus 15 degrees, well between minus 15 and minus 20 degrees. So we can get the Martin line going next week, no problem. You can see behind me here, the river has a little bit of ice over it, but there's some spots where the beavers have been breaking through and still coming up onto the shore. Now I wanted to get out here in October and do some beaver trapping, didn't get around to it. Had too much stuff to do back at home, unfortunately. We might be able to get some beavers right now. I mean, it, it, might, be, it might be tricky with the ice, but there's a few spots that are open that the beavers have broken the ice and come up onto shore. We got a, a spot right here by the bridge actually where they broke through and you can see their tracks up on the shore coming into these little willows that are growing on the bank here. So I figure we might as well give it a whirl, right? Throw some beaver traps out. We're gonna set some right here, right by the cabin. And they got a few spots where it looks like they're still coming up, so might as well. I'm gonna go check out a few other places too. And, I don't know, we'll see if there's any activity. We also need to focus our time on deer hunting. We didn't get any elk this year. Right now I've got zero meat in the freezer. Nothing. So we need to get some meat. So, I at least need to get one deer. I'm really hoping to get two. So we're going to be dedicating a lot of time throughout November here to deer hunting. And then, we can also start running our Martin loop. We won't set any traps, but just running the loop. Getting the trails cleared, cutting the wood, trimming back the brush, making it ready so that next week when we start setting traps, it'll just be a nice easy ride through the trail. So I hope you stick around throughout the duration of this video. Hope you stick around for the rest of the trapping series too. Gonna be going hard on the wolves this year. We didn't get any last year. So this year we're gonna be going hard on them. I'd like to get a few dogs on the ground. But for right now, let's get to setting some beaver traps. Getting our uh, first traps set out here. And then maybe tonight if we got time, we're going to go take the rifle and uh, maybe do some sitting. Try to find some deer sign and got to try to get some meat in the freezer. So you can see I'm right here, right by the cabin, right by the bridge. 
You can see where these beavers have been breaking through. And look, there's fresh tracks coming out. And like we just got this snow last night. First trap out here set. I blocked off the edges of it a bit, but that's the only open spot there. So hopefully they'll come through there. Maybe they'll see that bait stick out back or smell that lure stick there. If not, that was only like five minutes to set, so not too bad. That's the dam they got right there. So our food cache is right there. They got some open water right there. We'll go, we'll go check out the banks around that cache and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Look at that. They're definitely coming up right there. Snow is all packed down. Fresh tracks. That ice looks super thin too. Only got a little bit over there too. All right, we got a few places that we can set some more traps. Perfect. So here's the finished set. Got the bait stick there, lure stick there. Got a bunch of green wood shavings from the bark of this tree. This little aspen. Now you can see where they are coming up. They're coming up the bank here. Looks like they were chewing at the roots. Got a couple of them chomped off. But right as I was finishing setting this, I heard some swooshes of water underneath the ice so I'm hoping that means that there's some beavers either out you know feeding on their cash or out still being active at least so I got one more spot right across from me back over on the other side right there where they've been going you can see they've been coming up there's their tracks so let's go back over there we're gonna set one more here and then we'll go check out another spot hop on the quad and go check it out all right Trap number three, set and ready to go. Bait stick, scent stick, you know the drill. This is actually a real nice one. We got it blocked off real good on both sides. I don't really know if you can see into the water there, but this one's got a real nice gradual slope down. We broke out a bunch of ice in front. Right across from that cache. This could be the one. Looks good. Okay, well that's awesome. That's three right by the cabin. All right, let's uh, head back to the cabin. We'll throw our stuff on the quad. And then we're gonna go and check. There's two areas I wanna check out. I don't know if I can get to both today. I don't know what time it is. Sunset's early now. Two weeks ago it was 7.30. Now it's setting around 6.20. So we've lost a lot of light. A short amount of time. We'll go check out one of those areas. I'd really like to go check my trail camera too. Okay, well we're burning daylight, so might as well go do something. We'll see what we can do. We might go check one beaver spot and then go check the trail camera. And I don't know, if there's any light left, we can go sit somewhere until dark. 
and hopes for a deer. These logs that lay flat in the grass like this are pretty dangerous. So once we get more snow, the guys coming down here on the skidoo or the quad, and you don't see these stump ends, you hit it with your tire, your front ski, the skidoo, it can do a lot of damage to either you or to the machine. So we stand these cut parts up over them. Just let that cut wood sticks out of the snow and you know where not to drive. Well, we'll walk from here. If I remember correctly, it gets a little difficult to turn around at this trail. At least with the trailer. Oh, look at that. Those are fisher tracks. Fresh fisher tracks. It's actually a good sign because this trail that I'm on, I think we're going to include in our Martin loop this year. So seeing some fisher sign, that's pretty cool. There's open water here. Look how shallow it is though. Well, there's the remnants of the beaver dam. Huh. Well, we're certainly not setting any beaver traps here. We might be able to go check the trail camera though. Sure. I made up my mind. Let's do it. Let's go check the trail camera. See if there's any deer sign over there. Well, I just stopped to trim this log here. Right where I stopped, got a little rub action going on. It's decently fresh, definitely from this season. So that's good. Trail camera's just up here, so I'll get this tree cut and we'll go check some pictures. There's a little trail going through here. A few trails kind of Join up right here. Trail camera. Well, the batteries aren't dead. Let's see if we got any pictures. I haven't checked this for over a month now. A lot of doe pictures. I'm at 600 pictures right now, and it's all been does. Well, we got a little buck. Looks like a little 10 point. A little spiker buck. Another little buck. 1600 pictures. Last year we got some pretty good pictures of a few different bucks. Uh, didn't really get a crack at any of them though, didn't see any of them in daylight. Um, I, had, I had a chance at one, it was a fairly nice 10 point, but I took too long to decide whether to shoot it or not, and then it ran away, never saw it again. But I think this will be a good spot to leave the camera up at. Once the bucks start rutting and start moving around, I think we'll get quite a few pictures here. Uh, we're losing daylight quick though, so we'll get back to the quad and get heading back towards the cabin.
morning. Just got back from morning deer hunt. Just walked from the cabin here. Put on a few miles. Uh, some good deer sign. Didn't see any deer though. Got a lot colder last night than I thought it was going to. Thought it was going to stay right around zero. Got down to minus eight was the coldest that I saw. So let's take a look at those beaver traps. So here's the first one right by the bridge. You can see we got a pretty good layer of ice there. Second one over there looks pretty iced up too. And same story with that one as well. So before it starts to get even colder and the ice gets thicker and thicker, I'm going to get these traps out of here so they don't get stuck in the ice. Okay, had ourselves a quick lunch slash breakfast. I'm sitting there eating, and I can hear something running around in the rafters of the cabin. And I'm pretty certain it's a squirrel. Got squirrel tracks running right up to the cabin. Getting into the roof there. Those squirrels, they get up into the rafters and they build their nests and get a bunch of spruce cones up there and then all the scales off of them, they pile up. Those piles can get up around the chimney and then it's a big time fire hazard. I was just up there actually, uh, not that long ago, like less than a month ago I think, and it's looking real clean up there. So I'd like to keep it that way. So before we head out for the day, I think I'm gonna set a couple squirrel poles leaning up against the cabin to try and get that squirrel. So I got this first one, and I got the second one there. Just like that, a couple more snares set up behind the cabin. So hopefully we can get that squirrel and get ourselves some dinner while we're at it. Well, the 22 is dialed in, so we might as well go cruise around. I think we'll go start running the Martin Loop and uh, start clearing trail so that next week when we get our traps set up, it'll be easy riding. Then we got the 22 with us as well, so if we scare up a grouse, we can maybe get a shot at it. The grouse would be good for dinner too. So this is my trapping setup that I'm running for the first part of this trapping season, until the snow gets too deep at least. My Honda 4 tracks, 300. The front rack here, got the chainsaw and the 22. Back rack, we got uh, chainsaw gas and bar oil. And then just a little bag with some miscellaneous stuff in it. Got a little tub trailer. Uh, this is going to be pretty handy for carrying all of our traps and trapping gear and whatnot, and any animals we trap. And then for deer hunting as well, if we shoot a deer we can just throw it back in there and haul it back to camp.
Well, we made it a decent little way today. The trail was actually not bad. I only cut maybe about 10 or 12 trees. So not too bad. Um, getting to be about an hour left of daylight. I came to this little opening here. So I think what I'm going to do is get turned around, head back to the main trail, and then we'll park somewhere along there and just go for a quick walk before it gets dark and uh, see if we can't get a deer or see some deer or something. Such a nice day. Yeah, it's a little little windy every now and again, but man, just perfect temperatures. This minus five is just awesome. All right, let's get turned around. We'll get parked somewhere and start hunting. Well, made it back to the cabin. No luck deer hunting. Uh, the spot that I walked to, there was no deer sign, not even in any tracks. I think tomorrow morning I'm gonna do the same thing I did today, that same walk. Uh, there's quite a bit of deer sign in that area, so I'm just gonna stick with that. You know, walk a few hundred yards, sit and wait for 20 minutes, half an hour, walk another couple hundred yards, and just take it slow and keep my eyes open. Um, no grouse today either. Came back to the cabin and uh, the squirrel poles are empty. They haven't been touched. Doesn't look like that squirrel's been back. So maybe we'll get them tomorrow, hopefully. But uh, no fresh meat today. So I got uh, a few slices of ham to go with my potatoes and broccoli here tonight. That's ah, still a good meal. Can't complain. So I'm going to finish eating, do my dishes, get to bed early, and we'll get up, be out for first light. See what tomorrow brings. Well, it was not too bad of a morning. Really nice weather. Got cold last night. It's a good thing we pulled those beaver traps. Got down to minus 15. You can see there it's warming up a bit, but it's still below minus 10. So much for the mild temperatures that the forecast predicted. <laughs> so I just got back to the cabin, having a cup of coffee, warming up. I just saw that one little buck. Thought it was a doe at first. It was at about 100 yards, and then when I got my camera on it, zoomed in, I can see little tiny antlers and a little little fork antlers so little four point good to see though looked like a healthy deer so now we just gotta find its uh, big brother <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and make my eggs and toast I actually gotta head out of here today we'll be back out next week temperatures are supposed to be like this you know minus 15 degrees we're gonna get the Martin loop going and it's gonna be great so gonna make my breakfast and we'll get packed up and then uh, we gotta see if the old girl behind me there will start up. This will be the coldest temperature that I've started her up in. So that'll be interesting.
Do I dare try the electric start? Should I prime it first? Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it one prime. You'll prime it a couple times. So close, eh? Oh, we're getting there. Really don't want to kill my battery. Nice thing about these old quads, though, is they do have kickstart. So we'll see. She wants to. She wants to. Woo! Oh no. <laughs> Japers, creepers. Finally got it started. Cabin's all cleaned up. Ready for me to head out of here. Got some sunshine for the quad ride out. Life's good. Well, folks, thank you for watching. That's about it for this episode. Next week, we'll be back up here, getting the Martin line going, continuing with our deer hunting. Things are getting exciting. All I'm going to do now is head back to the truck and get loaded up. On the way there, I think I'm going to set up a few trail cameras. I'm going to keep my eyes open for deer. If I see anything, we'll see what happens. But unless something exciting happens, I will hopefully see you guys in the next episode. So until then, stay safe, stay healthy, take care. God bless, God bless you, God bless your family. And as always, stay wild.